welcome to the 100th edition of the Passion of the Computer Art Man. And straight from Canton, Ohio, here we are, the My Cameraman, Xavier. Hey, Xavier. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> Greetings, folks. Yes, it's me in front of the camera. Write it down. It doesn't happen often. Due to popular demand, in our 100th edition, we have decided to put Xavier on camera. Here I am. Now, aren't you all disappointed? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're here because this is a special 100th edition of this blog that we started just on a, on a lark, let's say, and figured that we'd be lucky if we got a half a dozen viewers and that was counting family. And it's grown into something that uh, we have uh, regular viewers every week. We get regular feedback and uh, it's been great and we love all of you. When we started uh, almost three years ago, it'll be three years in March, I had 124 views on YouTube and we now have 8,200 and counting. And when we take out all the ones by our family and friends, we still have nearly a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so over the, over the years, do you, do you have any uh, specific memories or anything you want to share with us? You know, there's specific memories. No, I just think every week has been so enjoyable for me. And it, it's just been a lot of fun. But I, I guess some specific memories I I enjoyed when we talked about uh, our New Orleans trip. I enjoy our holiday uh, blogs. And when we were able to blog on site at the New York Group Show, that was, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been to a lot of events, but that was one that I was with, with you at, and so I, I remember that a lot. The the two trips we did to New York were a ton of fun, and but you know everything every every Sunday nights uh, a ton of fun. Oh, definitely. And I the one of my favorite moments in the last three years was when I was standing in Little Italy, and I Rachel, my wife, looked over and I said. That guy, look at that guy. And we're in Little Italy. Granted, you are Italian. I said, that guy looks exactly like Xavier. And she's, she's just kind of gave me, I'm like, oh my God, it is you. So uh, that was a really, Actually, really cool time. Actually, I read lips. It was a little bit more explicit yeah. than that. But for the sake yeah. of our Holy blog. Holy pup. <laughs> <laughs> for the sake of our blog, it was, oh my God. That that was a ton of fun. You know, the, the I don't think we ever told the story of that. I had a flight to get me there in plenty of time that day and the flight was delayed and I ended up getting to New York a couple hours later than I planned. Now that was compounded by I got a, a cab driver, a very nice person, um, that due to construction took me around and said okay you're almost a little Italy and he let me out and I was kind of in in Chinatown so I you know everybody was nice uh, didn't have any problems or anything like that but uh, uh, you know, I was lost. You know, it was a, I'd never been there before, and it's like, where do I need to be? So at the time, I was using a Flintstone phone. Yes. It didn't have my iPhone, so I called my son Nick for a tactical air support, and I told him the intersection that I was at, and with the help of Google Maps, he told me where I needed to be, and it was like eight blocks down and two blocks over. And so I'm looking at my watch, and I knew where... Jeff and Rachel and their their family were at that time and where I said I was going to be and I'm trying to walk and it was just you know any of you who have ever been on foot in New York you know you have just these massive throngs of humanity on both sides of the streets so I basically got out in the middle of the street on the yellow line and sprinted <laughs> <laughs> down eight blocks and then two and you know I, I think I had convinced everybody there that I was like not exactly balanced mentally for doing that. And when I came over to the the sidewalk to get back on the sidewalk, it was like everybody just sort of parted like, you know, Moses parting the Red Sea. I think everybody wanted to say, we better stay away from this guy. He's out of his mind. So that was kind of funny. And I get over there and, and you know, Rachel waves at me and then, then uh, Jeff says, 
who are you waving at? And she mm -hmm. said something to the effect of, I heard this later, obviously, I couldn't hear from the distance that I was at. Oh, just some Thai Italian guy over there. <laughs> and Jeff did the double take, and then the, the rest is what we covered earlier. But that, that was just a ton of fun. Yeah. It, it was it was it was a lot of fun and it's it's been a it's been a ride oh yeah so definitely. with that i'm gonna switch places switch. and let the guy who's more experienced than me being in front of the camera take over but uh uh i want to thank all of you for joining us week after week we greatly appreciate it we love all of you yep. oh yeah <laughs> I am pumped up. Now here he really is, Jeff Mueller. Bam! One hundred. One hundred. Here's to here's to a hundred. Chink chink. Here we go. Boom. There we go. Yes, we are celebrating a little bit. Yes. That brings me to this this week. I'll do it quick. I just want to review. In three years, I had already started, and it's, it was four years in November when I started the, my first, uh, my fine art career. And I just wanted to review kind of for everybody that's trying to get into fine art, some of the things that I learned from the start to this point, which were almost, November will be five years. As a fine artist and trying to get into the, break into the fine art field, one of the main things is that you're creating art for a consistent amount of time. And you want to keep creating art all along. Through the ups, through the downs, you always want to be creating artwork. Uh, what collectors and art galleries are looking for is a consistency that you're not going to disappear, that you're not going to get depressed and stop creating artwork. Uh, if they're going to hire, if they're going to take you in at an art gallery, they want to know that you're doing this, you're committed to this. And if you start to sell, you're just not all of a sudden, they're going to put all this time and effort, get you people buyers and working and they're making money, you're making money, and all of a sudden you decide you don't want to do this. So creating artwork, uh, everybody says it's, it's, it's a little hazy, but creating artwork for five years kind of makes you a rookie, and I'm in my fifth year. You want to build up an inventory in that five years. I'm at about 25 paintings, inventory built up. I've sold some commissions. I've also done some artwork to not go directly into fine art. It is fine art landscapes, but I want to start to do more of the commercial aspect of fine art where you create artwork for uh, hotels, for restaurants, hospitality, and also corporate art. That is that is a, a viable way to make money in fine art. I am pushing myself in that direction. Big news. I signed up with Art Specifier. It's artspecifier.com. You can go there, search, browse the artist. I come up, my portfolio is there. Take a look. Uh, very exciting. They are going to be promoting me uh, to collectors, galleries, and corporate art buyers, interior designers, this type of stuff. And I'm really excited because it's a juried uh, website. I got in. I, I bought in on the full package. So this commitment is a, a big commitment. So that's the other thing I wanna talk about. You, you want your artwork after this point to start to be seen. So you wanna do any group show, uh, you wanna try and get your own shows. Right now I'm working on getting into the, the launch house. I, I'm gonna try and do an April date. It's gonna be a solo show. It's gonna have a good amount of my artwork. It's gonna be throughout the whole launch house. I'm going to have an opening. Once I have that date, I will promote it. There's going to be flyers. I'm going to invite everybody who watches. Come. It's it's a suburb of Cleveland, Shaker Heights. Come out that night. See my show. So once I get that show, that's a way of getting seen in front of people. Then also be on Art Specifier. I have also have my e-commerce computer art market set up. I have computerartman.com set up. I have my Computer Art Man and Art Market Facebook account, my Computer Art Man Twitter account, my Jeff Mueller Computer Art Man Twitter account, my main account. I'm getting really close. I'm within 70 of 5,000 followers. I don't- Awesome. I do not spam follow. And I define spam following as I go and follow 500 people, see who follows me back, and then delete the rest of them. I only 
accept people who follow me first, I then follow them back. So this is all the kind of stuff that you gotta do. That's the review. Remember, artspecifier.com, and we are at 100. So is there anything else you want me to add, Xavier? Well, nothing other than what was that thing we watched last Sunday night? <laughs> Yeah, was that a sporting event? Congratulations, Seattle Seahawks oh, uh, for uh, demolishing the Denver Broncos. My, my goodness, the you know the the uh, uncontested, even through the game, uncontested world champions. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, congratulations to them and their organization is quite an accomplishment. My goodness, that was. I feel sorry for Peyton Manning. He, in my quarterback scale, he really had a chance to solidify it, but one and two in Super Bowls. Really not capable of getting, he loses a lot of big games. It kind of puts him a little bit below Brett Favre in my, if he would have won this, I would have had to put him up there. Now he's might have a couple more years break Favre's record, but with Favre owning every quarterback record and the Iron Man and only one and one in Super Bowls, I got to really give the kudos out to Favre over Manning now. But that's just me. I'll tell you what, Seattle looked pretty unstoppable it was good uh you know i think that this this could be the start of a dynasty in seattle we'll i mean see. they were just you know you, you know beyond convincing congratulations to all of them congratulations to denver they had a great season it's a shame that the game didn't end up any better yeah we were um, rooting for a good game good we were rooting for a good though. game and uh oh yeah who didn't love the the dog and the the horse i right? like the radio shack they were getting they were taking back the 80s <laughs> it's pretty cool. Well, folks, we'll see you again next week. And thanks for again for staying with us all this time. Take care. Big 100. 100.